Obviously, those were not the correct methods of doing a wire repair. So thanks for joining us. My name is Troy Singleton. I'm here at Sinclair College in Dayton, Ohio. And today we're going to talk about doing a quality wire repair using a butt splice or a butt connector. Now, there are different uh, tools on the market. There are different types of um, butt connectors on the market. So we're just going to show you what we use. Uh, the ones that uh, we prefer are the ones that are actually called crimp and seals. So they actually, you make the crimp and then you go back and you seal it with a little bit of heat. So it's kind of like a mixture of a butt connector with uh, kind of like some heat shrink tubing. Okay. So let's get started. First thing we got to do is strip our wire. Now a note on the uh, actual butt connectors, they're actually labeled with the wire size. So you have the yellow color, it is 10 to 12 gauge. And then the next size down from that is the blue color. And that is our uh, 14 to 16 gauge. And then our smaller one, which is our red one, which is our 18 down to 22 gauge. So we're gonna use 14 gauge wire. So we're actually gonna use the blue butt connector. So again, you can go to any hardware store, uh, any of the parts stores and purchase these. Uh, these are the ones that are gonna be a little bit more expensive. I know when you're standing there and you're looking at the packages and you see, you know, you have lots of butt connectors and then you have only a few uh, crimp and seal type or the uh, splice leaves that are a little bit more expensive and there's less of them I know it's gonna be real easy to want to grab the other ones this is the better style okay so again this is gonna make the connection and it's also gonna seal the connection so I definitely like these a little bit better so first thing we have to do is strip the wire there are different kinds of wire strippers on the market uh, we have these style or this style we have uh, probably the more traditional ones um, I personally like the automatic ones so they actually strip the wire and actually cut the insulation around the wire and then it's kind of a two-stage thing it pulls the insulation off the wire kind of in one motion as far as one motion with your hand. So a little bit better in my opinion, a little faster. Um, uh, with all of these, however, there are some cautions. Uh, for instance, on these, uh, this is actually labeled solid wire or stranded wire. So you got to kind of pay attention to what kind of wire you're using and uh, what part of the strippers that you're using. Uh, again, these are probably the most traditional style. All right. And then the automatic ones. Uh, with any of these, however, I'm going to go ahead and strip this. And then as far as stripping this back, I'm probably going to go a little bit better than a quarter of an inch. Now, when you strip this, whatever method you use, go back and look at the base of the wire where the insulation starts or ends, okay? And make sure you didn't cut any of the wires because that's bad. The other thing I like to do is I like to look around and find my little piece that I stripped off. And I like to take a look at it, at least look through it and make sure I don't see any strands of copper. Because what happens is if you get a little bit uh, aggressive or ambitious with your strippers, you'll end up taking the outer uh, strands of wire end up cutting those off and that's bad. That's going to add voltage drop. That's going to add resistance and that's all bad. Okay. We'll talk about that on another video. All right. Uh, so with this uh, side, we're going to kind of spin this down just to kind of get uh, rid of any of the flyaways. Okay. So that one's ready. I'm going to go ahead and strip the other side. And same thing, probably a little better than a quarter of an inch. Uh, you can actually get the little stoppers for this. It has a little stopper that you can get. Um, it's kind of a strip gauge. Uh, tells you how far back to strip it. Um, those are kind of nice as well. And again, using these other styles, same thing. If I'm going to use this style wire strippers, okay, uh, basically I'm going to line up the number of the wire gauge. So this again being 14 gauge wire, I'm on the 14 stranded side. And really what I'm going to do is just kind of pinch down a little bit. Sometimes you could spin it, kind of depends on how uh, thick the insulation is and you're just going to kind of pull through. Okay. But again, you got to be careful. Go back and look at the base of the insulation or the base of the wire, kind of look around and that took off a couple strands. So if I bend this around, I see a couple short strands there. So again, just be extra careful when you're doing your stripping, just because you might end up stripping off some of the copper. And again, if I look inside there, oh yeah, there's no doubt. I see several strands down in the piece that I cut off. So again, just use some caution when you're stripping your wire. Now, as far as the actual butt connector itself, it doesn't matter if you're using the uh, non version of this, so the non crimp and seal version or the crimp and seal. What the manufacturers actually recommend is you crimp the wire um, in the area the area that makes sense, obviously. And then when you go back and do your second crimp, never crimp it the same way. Always do it 90 degrees off. 
Okay, so if you do it 90 degrees off, that actually adds like 60 pounds of pulling force to that connection. Because if you actually crimp these both the same way, you actually smash that barrel or that tube down and you could crack one of the sides of it. Makes perfect sense, right? Okay, so we're going to go ahead and do that. And then I'm just going to use the traditional style uh, wire strippers. So again, all I'm doing is matching up the color. Since I'm using a blue crimp and seal or a blue butt connector, I'm looking for the little blue dot. And if I find the little blue dot and I'm just going to crimp this down, okay, squeeze this good and tight. All right. And you can kind of tell the tools bottomed out. And then I'm just going to give that a slight tug, make sure that feels good. Okay. Now again, I crimp this one this way. So I'm going to turn my tool 90 degrees and I'm going to crimp this one the other way. Okay, so I got that ready to go. I'm going to put my wire in here. And again, I always like to twist the wire a little bit. That way it gets rid of any of those little flyaways. Okay, uh, that way all the wire goes into the actual splice. All right, still got one little flyaway there. Okay, so again, I'm going to crimp this 90 degrees off. Crimp that down good and tight. Okay, and then once I'm done, I'm going to kind of pull on a little bit. That feels good, looks good. You can see my crimps are 90 degrees apart. All right. Again, adding that extra pulling force and also making sure that I'm not distorting or cracking the metal, uh, that little metal barrel in there. Okay. Now, again, the advantage to these is if I heat these ends up, they act like heat shrink, heat, I can't even say it, heat shrink tubing. So these are going to squeeze down. So I'm going to heat these up until just a little bit of glue comes out the end. Okay. Now, I know there's lots of methods out there. Okay. Um, one of those is using a lighter. I'm not a big fan of using a lighter because in the automotive world, you know, let's say that you are uh, replacing a fuel pump connector and you're underneath the vehicle and you have the fuel pump connector hanging down. You have the fuel tank laying off to the side, but you still have fuel lines hanging over your head with gasoline vapors. Okay. Gasoline vapors and an open flame, probably not a good idea. Okay, but can you use this also if you're working on a car and you're up under the dash and or maybe near the carpet An open flame again is not a real good idea. Okay, so I know you can use some of the mats. There's some gloves and mats and things that you can use to protect that and probably a good thing. But again, uh, obviously the caution with uh, gasoline vapors, that's very bad. So the preferred method is actually a heat gun. Okay, so you're going to take a heat gun and you're just going to heat the area up. Okay, and it's already shrinking down. A lot of people think that the heat gun is slow. It's actually really fast. Okay, so that side already shrinking down, already shrinking down. And again, I'm just kind of waiting to see just a little bit of glue. Okay, a little bit of glue ooze out. Okay, and I know that I'm done. Okay, so that's that side. Okay, and then again, uh, another word of caution with this, aside from the safety issue and gasoline vapors, this tends to blacken everything. It's going to blacken the uh, butt connector. It's going to blacken the wire a little bit. Um, and again, it's the heat is so concentrated. A lot of times if you go too far, it'll actually crack open and then you have to do this whole thing again. So I think a heat gun, a little bit more of an even heat. Just again, just kind of move this around. Keep your fingers out of the way. And I'm just kind of spinning the wire a little bit, moving the heat gun around a little bit. There it shrunk down. And there we go. A little bit of glue starting to ooze out. This is a high quality wire repair. And now it is also a sealed connection. So this can be used under the hood, under the vehicle. And then of course I would do this inside the vehicle as well. So there I know that I have a good solid wire repair. Okay. Now, a couple other things here real quick as we wrap up. There are some other tools on the market. Again, I know I showed you the traditional style. Uh, there are some ratcheting versions. Okay. So it's kind of a fixed torque as far as clamping down on the uh, butt connector. So as you kind of clamp down here, you can see this is a ratcheting tool. Okay. And again, there's all kinds of different ones on the market there. So as you get to that perfect torque of squeezing this down, so again, the tool won't release till I hit that perfect torque and then the tool's going to release. Okay. So when you feel that tool release, you have hit the perfect torque for the size of butt connector that you're using. So again, depends on your budget and um, again, lots of tools on the market there. All right. Again, these are just the tools that I prefer to use. All right. All right. Thanks for watching. Thanks for being with us and we'll see you next time.